Go and make disciples in all families. The word nations in Hebrew is the word family. The word nations, plural, is families. The book of Matthew was written in Hebrew and translated into Greek. It was written for Jewish people. Go and make disciples, make Talmudim, make devoted ones in all the families. See, God doesn't really look at governments and countries, and it's a deception to be caught up in governments and countries. God makes family lineages. And when we are a part of refreshing one person, their whole family becomes delighted. Teaching them to obey or follow all the meats vote I have given you. That's that beautiful, tricky word that I love, meets vote. A mitzvah is a little piece of chocolate. It's a treat. A mitzvah is a treat. A mitzvah is also, I mowed my lawn and I mowed my next door neighbor lady's lawn. It's a good deed. When you do a good deed for somebody, it's a mitzvah. And a piece of instruction that's helpful is also a mitzvah. Hey, if you take that one nozzle off and you put the sprinkler nozzle on it, and then you put that sprinkler nozzle over by the garden, it'll spray the garden really nicely, and you don't have to stand there. So a little piece of instruction that's helpful is a mitzvah. But you know what also is a mitzvah? A command, a piece of instruction, or a rule, or a law. The Ten Commandments are the Ten meets vote. The Ten Treats. So the word treat is the same word as commandment. And it's a really wonderful thing to meditate on. I like to call the things that Jesus caught taught the goodies. Okay, the goodies of Jesus actually keep our family protected and safe and happy and wonderful. Now, I'm going to introduce you to two words, catacalupto and parabolion. Catacalupto, parabolion. I don't know lots and lots and lots of Greek, but when there's words that are kind of like cause a conflict and the translation in English is not really so good and you need to use a couple of sentences to describe what it really means. Parabolion means an encircling beauty, an encircling frame or a beautiful encircling. Parabolion. Catacalupto means draped over, hanging down. Draped over, hanging down. Like when you take a tablecloth, a really pretty tablecloth, and you throw it over a table, and it goes over the top of the table, and then it drapes down. That's catacalupto. Draped over, hanging down. Now, Jesus of Nazareth selected 12 tough, ordinary working guys. A, um, a tax collector is kind of like a drug dealer. Kind of the dregs of society that's doing their best to make some quick cash. A commercial fisherman... You all know commercial fishermen. They're tough characters. They are tough, shoot from the hip, rough, tough characters. 
So Jesus selected these commercial fishermen and he taught them in Luke 24 and in Acts chapter 1. It says he taught them in his resurrection form across 40 days all the new details of the new covenant to interact with Abba, Father, God, Yahweh, God of heaven and earth, God of eternal truth, God, the life giver, and the one who is the author of eternal life. So this new covenant, these goodies that he taught, that he's his, his selected sent ones, he taught them all these goodies of how to be the special new collection of people that are connected with God. And he taught them. Renounce your sins and talk about your evils before you go into baptism. And whenever you ever come together for prayer, you talk about your sins and your evils first and you don't go talk to God if you've got junk in your life or trouble in your conscience. And that's a challenge to the men. There's actually an implication that the women are going to have little troubles in their hearts. And you're going to have to move on with the women in a state of fussing a little bit from time to time. Just like there are some times where you need to pick a child up who's fussing and you need just to carry him along. So, we have become a churchianity that has forgotten a lot of the goodies and the treats, the mitzvot, the treats that Jesus has taught. So, he taught 12 guys, and they started doing the work after he ascended. But then he selected another special one. This super rabbi who had been killing people. He was more like an ISIS religious terrorist than anybody else. He was killing people because he was jealous that those... Yeshua followers are getting more converts than we are and he's pissed off and he's joined up with the synagogue of Satan who's willing to accuse and kill because they haven't accepted Messiah. They're willing to kill. So this guy is arrested by Jesus and a rabbi is a born learner. A rabbi knows that he wants to go and learn from the smartest people. So the natural move for the Apostle Paul, or Rav Shaul, which is his real name, the Rabbi Saul, strong young rabbi, the best move for him would have been to run to Jerusalem, throw himself at the feet of the apostles and say, what must I learn? Teach me, teach me. What did he teach you? What, 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 what must I learn? What must I learn? But instead, the Apostle Paul was called out into the desert towns of Arabia. That means there's not a lot of, super, a lot of Jews there. And Paul is a super Jew. He is really hot with Judaism and he doesn't care a hoot about those Ishmaelites and those Arab types. Remember, Abraham had two sons. Yitzhak, baby chuckles, and Ishmael. So Paul, for three years does not go and check information with the 12 apostles. That's weird. But he is given a program direct from Jesus. This is crazy. This is very intense. In Galatians, read Galatians 1 and 2 and 3. 
He says, I consulted no man, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, I was sent out into the desert towns of Arabia. And he learned the stuff of Jesus directly, supernaturally, from Jesus himself and the Holy Spirit. Supernaturally, direct from the spirit realm. And after three years, after three years, what did he do? What did he do after three years? He sneaked into Jerusalem and he met up with only Peter and James, the half-brother of Jesus. And he wanted to just check and make sure if all the details, all the goodies that he got direct from Jesus were exactly what Jesus taught the 12 in person. This is fascinating. This is fascinating. Did I say this is fascinating? I'm telling you, this is fascinating. This is supernatural teaching. It came to Rabbi Paul, it came to the Twelve directly, it came to Rabbi Paul supernaturally in secret. He sneaks in, he talks to Peter and James, they're all blown away. Every single detail that Paul is teaching is exactly what Jesus taught in person in his resurrection form. So therefore, Rav Shaul, Rabbi Paul, the Apostle Paul, was stuck in comfortable jail cells where he had time to write to the little gathered churches in various places. He had time to write things down. And he wrote a large portion of what we call the supernatural New Testament, the Koine Greek New Testament, which is the most duplicated book in all history before the printing press. They have found more copies of the Koine Greek New Testament than any other book, including Socrates and Plato. So Paul has written a lot of the New Testament. And in the New Testament, he is writing to Corinth. Corinth is the place where you've got the temple of Aphrodite, the sex god. And in the Roman Empire, if your kids were fixing to get married, you would send them to Corinth to have sex in the temple and to make some sacrifices so that they will have a healthy sex life. And a long, long time ago, some missionaries to Haiti, who had done spiritual battles with voodoo and santeria, they told my mom, read First and Second Corinthians, because Corinth is just like America, the temple of the sex god where everything is sexy, 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 wonder, 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 sexy, sexy. So, when Paul writes to the Corinthians, he writes these words, and I'm going to say what Jesus said. When Jesus was being challenged by Satan in the wilderness what were the first words he spoke to Satan every time? He said, it is written. He said, it is written. He said, it is written. So I'm going to say that to you all. It is written. If a woman prays or prophesies without catacalupto draped over, hanging down, not a bonnet or a scarf or a wrap, 
but a prayer shawl just tossed over the head in the time of praying and prophesying and corporate gathering. If a woman does not have catacalupto, the men, the male human beings associated with her, will be disgraced, spiritually disgraceful. Now, I want to remind you that John the Baptist was called spiritually disgraceful by the good hotshot pastors and leaders. He was a nut to them. He's a crazy nut out there in the wilderness. Jesus was referred to as the good guy pastors. The Pharisees are the good guys. They sit in Moses' seat, and Jesus even said, you need to follow what the, past, the, the Pharisees tell you to do, but do not be like their hearts, because their hearts are prideful. The Pharisees called Jesus of Nazareth weird, crazy, and a party animal because of the people that he hung out with. They called him a party animal. There were polite assassinations against people that were spiritually honorable. Just because a guy is a preacher and he's rounded up a bunch of people that are interested in getting high on Jesus does not mean that that person is spiritually honorable. They may actually be doing things that God is not asking them to do. So the measure of spiritual, spiritually honorable is a very difficult measure. If a woman prays or prophesies in a corporate gathering without a catacalupto over her head, she is disgracing her head and the lineage of authority from God to Christ and Christ to man and man to woman and then the men and the women to the children. And it's written, Woman was made out of man, but man comes from woman. So there's a complete cycle. But the respectful lineage of authority is what is being mentioned. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. A woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, non catacalypto brings disgrace to or causes her male human family members to become disgraceful. Then it is written, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 10, a woman should have a catacalupto, a symbol of authority on her head because of the spirit beings, because of the angels. Now, there's two words in Greek that are translated into English in the New Testament, angel. One word is angelo, which means messenger. The other word is deus, which means glorious one. So it's written that the spirit beings, the angels, which can be angels of light or angels of darkness, the angels will be affected. Ephesians 12, verse 6. Or is it 612? I forget. <laughs> Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against territorial spirits who know how to mess with men, who know how to mess with women, who know how to mess with rich and comfortable folks, who know how to mess with poor folks. There's teams of demons that know how to mess with certain types of people. There are teams of demons that know how to mess with people who have been raised in Christianity and those demons know how to keep those people from understanding the goodies of Jesus. 
Now, if you go a little farther, it says that God has given woman her long care, hair as a parabolion. But in English, it says covering. God has given woman her long hair as an encircling beauty around the beauty of her face. He has given her hair as an encircling beauty. I know a person whose husband loves the look of his wife's hair. She constantly wears a HUD covering all the time. And he's not allowed to see the encircling beauty of her hair around her face. And she frustrates and gives a stumbling block to the man who truly loves her and appreciates her. Because she's so obsessed with the head covering thing. Anything that gets taught can be shoved too far in one direction, too far in another direction. So, I want to tell you, I am not comfortable with female human beings who don't give a flip about what is written that was written by people who were executed and killed for their faith And I'm telling you, if I'm going to be in relationship with a female human being, I just hope that that female human being is on her knees at least once a day with a covering over her head, praying the morning prayer to bless the whole world and her family. That's a big deal. That's the most important thing that we can do as a family unit every day is stop and pray for this whole world and all of its peoples. And if you're going to come and be at family honesty camp, you know, I want to put up the things that are going to make you upset and make you want to go away. Because we like to set the alarm for 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Get on our knees with prayer shawls over the shoulders of the men and over the heads of the women and pray and thank Jesus for taking his nails at 9 o'clock and pouring out the Holy Spirit at 9 o'clock and making the darkness come over the land at 12 o'clock and giving up his spirit at 3 o'clock and the morning prayer for the whole world and then the evening prayer to clean us up from our sins from the day and speak a blessing of peace over everybody as we go to sleep so we don't have any demons messing around with us. Acts 2.42, they were addicted to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the being together, the breaking of bread, which means communion. Luke 24, when Jesus broke the bread, his identity was revealed. And number, five, number four, the prayers, the prayers of the temple. It has been very difficult for me. I had all this pain in my left leg and I'm like, Lord, why is there all this excruciating pain in my left leg? He said, because you're surrounded by women who actually don't want to be supportive of the men in the way that Jesus taught. They just don't feel like it. And the problem is they were never taught by men how to be what they need to be. So that's part of the problem too. They were not taught and they need to be taught. So the buck stops here. Uh-uh, no more. Let's not be friendly with people who are being disobedient Let's rather educate them and find out whether they want to follow the goodies of Jesus or not. Because if they don't, they can go somewhere else. There's plenty of people wearing Jesus t-shirts and having a Christianity party in a state of disobedience. People that are even justifying killing 
and high government offices and all the things that you weren't allowed to do for the first 300 years. So, it is written. Catacalupto and Parabolion. 